So, who am I that is talking right now? I my name is Therese Rosenblad, and I am the program manager of Rep. Four, which is the short for Renewable Energy Program Number Four. So you might hear us saying Rep. Four, and then you know what it is. Except for me, I have my dear colleagues Louise and Christina with me this morning. Could you please say who you are and what you do? Louise, will you start? Yes. Uh, my name is Louise Elstadius, and I work as a communication officer at Life Academy. Uh, and my name is Christina Landfors, and I'm the managing director for Life Academy, but I'm also responsible for this training program. And I got a background in energy efficiency and renewable energy. So this uh, program is very close to my heart. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, going into the details about the program and hope that we will meet in person further on. So I think it's time to get started um, with the introduction about the program. And as Therese mentioned, we, there will be an opportunity to ask all your questions afterwards. So let's see if we can start to fill some gaps at least. Yes. Let me share my screen. Hopefully yes. you will see my pres our presentation. Exactly. Well, as I mentioned before, you have now entered the information webinar on the Global Capacity Development Program for Renewable Energy which we in short call REP4. And the agenda for today is that we will have the welcome and introductions, and then we will have a short introduction to Life Academy. Uh, we will have an introduction to the Renewable Energy Program, REP4. We will also uh, this, talk a little, about, a little bit about the targeted organizations and the criteria for recruitment that we have in order to select the 30 participants that will be joining us for this REP4 program. We will also talk a little bit about practicalities, how to apply, and then after all of this, we will have uh, time for questions. Yes. Just to start, uh, this program is possible by CEDA, the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency. They are the one that put up the money and have the idea about this program. Uh, and their goal in capacity development is to contribute to strengthening the institutional capacity uh, in the energy sector in a specific number of countries. And of course, we are all looking for the Agenda 2030. Uh, and there is a strong focus on local ownership. So, so sort of this program is sort of set, but there is also room for input from the participant and participating organizations. So that will be a program adapted to the real needs in the participating organizations. And you can read more about CEDA on their webpage. And Life Academy, um, we are the one that are carrying out this program. We are planning it and also doing all the practicalities. Uh, and we've been around quite a long time. We were established in 1995 and we are located in Karlstad in Sweden. Uh, and we have more than 25 years of experience when it comes to international capacity building and facilitating global networking for sustainable development. And I want to stress that, that all our business is about sustainable development. Otherwise, we will not uh, work with that uh, training or project. And the objective is to train and support people to take action for a sustainable future. And we do that by arranging international training and capacity building programs, global networking, and facil facilitate cooperation. And that could be, for instance, in projects. So that's very shortly uh, about our organization. And I also want to show you some of the recent international training programs that we have been working on. We have been working on ICT and pedagogical development efficiency, uh, energy efficiency, use and planning, wind power, and most lately, the capacity development program on renewable energy. And this is the fourth global program. And we also had a specific program for Uganda, also running under that um, uh, regarding renewable energy. And we also want to share with you the first group from Renewable Energy Program and the group visited Karlstad in Sweden. So these are the, the change agents that were, were trained during this program. 
uh, and we really use this word change agent. So this training is not to be very, very technical skilled. It's more about to have the um, capacity, uh, the self-confidence, and also the ability to provide change in um, to, towards a more renewable energy system. So that's really what we are heading for. It's a nice group of people. <laughs> very nice. Yes. And this is our global network. You can see the green, it's Sweden in the, up in the very north. And all the dark blue are countries where we have been uh, working uh, in different cooperation and made trainings. So that's very shortly about our organization so that you know who you are meeting today. And this is the Global Capacity Development Program for Renewable Energy. And Therese, will you go through a bit about the program? Yes, I was thinking of that. Thank you very much, Christina, for talking about CEDA, who is financing this program, and then Life Academy, who will be organize, organize, organize I can't speak English this morning, <laughs> uh, to uh, carry out this program. But uh, the overall objective to this program is to contribute to strengthening the conditions for increased investment in renewable energy to provide modern and sustainable energy systems. And this is what we will focus on during this uh, one year training. So this is the overall objectives. And then when we look into the program content, uh, Christina, you will lead us through the program content. Yeah, as I mentioned already before, it's needs driven and it's a, uh, the program is developed to suit the organizational needs and address the challenges. So when you apply for this program, there will already be some questions about this. And we are trying to promote active participation. It's not about just sitting and listening and taking notes. It's also to do knowledge sharing and have practical experience from, from best practices and so on. But we also expect the participants, since all participants will be experienced in the energy area, in different areas, and when we come together, there is a pool of knowledge and we will try to, to share experience so we all um, contribute to, to the capacity building. And uh, it says uh, that there will be support to change projects by mentors. And we have specific mentors that will support the, the uh, development of change projects. And I want to mention specifically about the change project because that a crucial part of the training is that the participants from the same country come together to develop and to implement a change project. And that is for two reasons. First of all, it will be about um, practicing product management but also to actually do an action that will uh, be part of the development towards more renew uh, using more renewables within that country. So that will be like the first big assignment to identify uh, an area, a problem to solve. So we will come back to that, but that will be like a process running through the, pro uh, the program. And we will also have an online learning platform that is developed specifically, specifically by Life Academy, where all information like webinars, training material, everything will be uh, um, available online. And the very content of the program, it's about policy formulation and implementation. So policy is an important part of the training program also technical solutions, but that will be more like you have an, uh, an understanding about solar, wind, hydro, the ups and downs with those technologies. It will not be a very detailed um, technical skills about how to, uh, to have the right dimensions for a solar system or something like that. We will also focus on investment conditions, how to make a project uh, um, uh, uh, viable so that you can also have uh, financing for that. And in the white box, there are some more soft skills. It's all about the product management. We will focus a lot on that. Communication, how to actually make change, behavior change. It's not only about technology and also about networking. So change management will also be part of the training. So this is sort of the program content in a nutshell. In short. <laughs> in very short. Yeah. <laughs> very short. And then we will have it also have a look at the focus areas and the focus areas that we are lifting in this program is, of course, the uh, agenda 2030 
and how the sustainable development goals affect the energy area. We will look into that in, in different ways and from different perspectives and so on. Uh, uh, the, one of the focus areas is also to, to look at the strategies for achieving national goals, access to clean energy and sustainable, etc. Uh, we will do a deep dive into a sustainable energy system and how the various part, parts interact. Again, from different angles, we will have a look at this. Renewable energy development on grid and off grid and clean cooking is, have, is and have been relevant in all the former um, programs and will be also. Uh, grid integration of renewable generation of electricity. We will look at energy management, including energy efficiency. We will work, as Christina mentioned, on uh, the project, different projects. And we will look at the project development and project management also uh, from different angles. Change management and organizational change is uh, another of the focus areas that we will be looking into during this program. Christina, would you like to add anything? Oh, sorry. No, I think we, we can, if there are some questions, we can go back to that uh, later on, yes. because this is, of course, very you know, of much interest or if you are planning to apply for the program. But I think you covered it well. Yes. And then the, the even more interesting, maybe. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, as I guess most of you know that the deadline for the application is already now February 19th, which is on Sunday. So if you still haven't written your application, it's high time to do that right now. And for those of you who have and you're, or you're curious what will happen, I will let you know. The time, the time plan for REP4 is that uh, we will, as soon as we have finished the selection of our 30 participants, which we, we estimate that we will finish the selection around March 20, somewhere there, we will see. Then you will at least uh, find out who will be uh, selected. Uh, then we will start phase one and we will have the opening uh, and preparation, and all of this will be carried out online during March to April. And then we will have our opening meeting on March 28th. So all of these specific dates, please write them down already now, even though you might not know if you have been selected or not, it could be good to just prepare. Therese, uh, you can also mention that all this information is presented in the brochure. So yes. probably you've seen the brochure for the program and yeah. there, the details are in that brochure. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And then during phase three, it will we will focus on project planning and implementation. And this will be both online and we will also have the semi-digital meeting for three days. And this will occur during May to September. The semi-digital meeting, <clears throat> sorry, uh, will be in uh, June 27 to 29th, and this will uh, happen in uh, country teams. So most of the time we gather the country teams uh, in and around the capital, and uh, you will sit together during these three days, so you will have time and uh, to, to really work on your change project. Uh, phase four is the Swedish phase, and this will be a training on site that will be carried out in Sweden during uh, more or less two weeks. The first week will be here in Karlstad, where, where Life Academy is situated, and then the second week will be in Stockholm, and this will be October 2nd to 13th. Then we have phase five, which is uh, the project implementation. And this is uh, during October to January, and most of this will be online. And I forgot to mention that uh, from, from the phase one and onwards, you will have support both of your regional mentors and from your life mentor, mentors that uh, Christina mentioned uh, briefly before. Yes, and then the final phase, which is phase six, is the way forward. And that will be a semi-digital meeting during three days. And then again, you will be meeting in your country teams. And this will be in February 13th to 15th, for short. <laughs> yes.
Thank you, Therese. Yes, I think that's fine for now. Yeah. And then if we continue with the targeted organizations, uh, of course, it's strategic organizations within the energy sector in these targeted countries. And for this uh, call, Kenya, Mozambique, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia, Zambia and Zimbabwe are invited. Uh, but uh, from pr uh, previous years, we know that it might be uh, less countries that actually participate. It also depends on the individual uh, applications, but also the teams that can be put together from those applications. So there might be less countries actually participating. So let's see, depending on, on the, on the in, uh, incoming application. But we are also, uh, to be more specific, we are hoping to have ministries, departments, agencies, or regulators participating in the program, program as well as utility, uh, utilities, regional actors, uh, civil societies um, organization, and natural public and or private financial actors. And it's also our experience from previous program that's really good when we have this mixture of people from different parts of the energy sector coming together. Uh, contributing with new new perspectives and uh, um, yeah that's a good mixture and we also uh, uh, suggest that the organizations they should be willing to cooperate with other organizations within the program so it's a lot about networking and sharing experience so, so the organizations need to be open-minded to that that approach uh, and the, the change agents, the participants, are expected to share knowledge within their respective organizations so that they are engaging manager and colleagues in their change projects. So, for instance, if one country comes together to focus on a specific problem, they need to engage with the stakeholders and colleagues to uh, share, share the, the problem, but also have input from them. So it's supposed to be a change project that actually contributes with, to the daily work at your home organization. We'll come back to that, but that's also a really important part of the program. So if you want to apply to it, how do you go about? Well, that's a very good question. I don't know how many of you that have already applied, and but you, most of you that are here have probably already read the brochure. But uh, if we look into the applicant selection criteria, we want the role of the applicant in the organization to be that you really have a mandate to carry out change work, as Christina mentioned already. This is very vital for this uh, change project to be successful, of course. We want you to have a central and, and relevant uh, position or function or role in your organization. And when we look into the personal qualities of the change agent we're looking for, we want uh, these people to be ambitious, to be curious, to be re resilient, um, to be proactive, to drive change processes. Uh, it's very good if you have experience from this already, uh, big or small, uh, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, we want you to have good English language skills since this program will be carried out in English. If your, um, if your language is not English, it's very good if you, have, if you take a test and, and send us the result for this. Um, but all of this is in the brochure. It's good if you have an ac academic degree and or relevant work experience. We, we try to, as Christina mentioned already, we try to find a, a mixture of the people we select because with, we have uh, our experience is that if you have a mix, uh, mixed background of people participating, it will be so much better. You can share your experience, your knowledge, your network, and all of this. So it will be more successful and a much stronger change uh, project. And we can also add from previous uh, applications that we are really hoping to have strong uh, female um, uh, yes. applications, because uh, in, in the energy sector, there is sort of a lack of women. <laughs> But we saw we saw a number of women uh, now in the participants, uh, so it's uh, we we have high hopes. But yeah. also, of course, uh, men in different uh, ages and so of on. Of course, yes, yeah. we like the mixture. Yeah, uh, and we yep. That, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have the expectations on participating in all parts of the training. Yeah, and I think we I think we wrote in the brochure that we. We expect you to spend almost half a day per week if you um, want to participate in this on top of 
the schedule uh, training trainings that we have we showed you just recently. Yes, please go on, Christina. Right. <laughs> so practicality, yeah, yeah, practicalities. Um, this is very important because we usually get questions regarding this. And CEDA, which is our financier, will cover all training costs during the program except national travels, visa costs, and the program is not provided any per diem. So if you know that you need this, as soon as you get selected, you start warming up your uh, supervisors that you might need some per diem um, support when you are away. Uh, we do not cover the cost for implementing the change project, if you have any. Uh, it's that is not financed by the program, and, and that I think it's very good to to be clear about and understand already from the beginning. And we want the participants to fulfill all parts of the program to receive a diploma. So there's no questions about that. All parts. You yeah. sign up for the whole program, so to say. Yeah. And then how to apply? Yes, how to apply. Uh, Louise will send us the link in the um, in the chat. I see um, that she's doing that now. Read more about it. Uh, you go into the, the link and then there is a number of things that you need to fill in. We don't have the time to go through the whole application. If there is some of you that have started the application and there's something that is unclear, you feel free to ask us now when we're soon going to open up for questions. But again, the last day to apply is Sunday, February 19th, which is this Sunday. Yes, that is very short of this almost one year program that we have in front of us. So, Christina. Yeah, maybe there are some questions. Yes, I guess there are. Yes, I guess there are. Um, one question in the chat from yes, Dillian. Hello, I'm a student pursuing Masters of Science Renewable Energy at the university. Am I eligible to apply? Uh, actually, we will prioritize uh, people working in the energy sector. So being a student, I think you would need to, to have some years experience to be, be um, uh, considered for the program. Sorry. It was a very concrete questions. Maybe there are other questions. You can raise your hand or write in the chat. Where do the regional mentors come from exactly? Yes, uh, one regional mentor is from um, is uh, Mr. Matthew Matimbe or Dr. Matthew Matimbe from uh, Taria in Tanzania is one of the regional mentors. And we also have uh, Kari Kritzinger from the, the Stellenbosch University in Cape Town, South Africa. They are the regional mentors. We also have, and we usually divide the, the participating countries. So the men, there are some countries that have, have one of these mentors. We try to do that as good. And both of them have a very long experience in renewable energy and also energy efficiency uh, within uh, um, different regions in Africa. We also have, uh, uh, Therese mentioned, life mentors. And I'm one of those life mentors, and more focusing on the, the process, the change projects, the, the, those parts, how to actually have the red thread through this. Uh, and my experience as being a consultant working with renewable energy and energy efficiency uh, in Sweden and also internationally for quite many years. I think it's a bit more than 30 years. Uh, and we also have uh, another Swedish colleague. Uh, she's working as a consultant as well. Uh, her name is Anna Karin Munizio, and she has a long, very long experience of renewable energy uh, in a, a, a long list of countries, including uh, several African countries. So I think uh, you will find that uh, satisfying. And we also work with other experts that we use as uh, for, for specific uh, uh, webinars, seminars, also during the different phases when we meet uh, during the regional phase in Zambia or in Sweden, you will meet with uh, um, several different experts in the, in, the, in the area. I hope that answers the question. Yes. Um, we have another question here. Uh, I did apply but forgot to send a copy via e email. Is my application safe without the copy sending option? 
Um, I'll I would... suggest that you send us an, an email with your name and we will double check. Yeah. I think that's a very good. Uh, that's a good idea. Good yeah, yeah. So maybe Louise, we can put uh, the the email to Therese. I think that would be sure. the easy way. Yeah. Yes. So if you can, we'll had a, a direct co contact. So please write your name, and we will double check, and then we confirm to you that the application is received well. Yes. Uh... Who nominates an apl applicant? Are they informed about the program beforehand? Yes, we try to reach out to all strategic organizations in the targeted countries. So they should have been uh, information sent and received. Uh, but you can also, of course, check with your supervisor, but there should they should be aware. All right. Okay, we have a few questions coming in here, so I'm just gonna oh, continue. Good. It's excellent, keep them coming. Uh, yeah. Uh, how big should the change project be? Should it include parameters that are beyond our control? That would require high level approvals. Yes, this is an interesting question because we always end up with quite ambitious change projects to start with and then we nar narrow it down. Um, yeah, it's like a process and usually you might have to, it's not like, you, uh, since it's a limited time and the resources are like, the budget is like zero, but uh, so I can have some examples from, from previous programs. Um, I remember uh, one country developing guidelines for servicing um, solar panels because they figure out that they were uh, mal malfunctioning. So it could be quite limited. I it haven't been a problem so far, uh, so we usually find a way around that. But I think uh, you will have the support that you need to develop the change project. And the the issue is to have like a, a limited scope, not a wide scope. And we will try to support you in that process. So uh, it has been working out quite well for the previous programs. And hopefully also, and we will also show you some examples when we get started with the program, what the change project could be. So I don't think that would be an issue. Yes. Okay, let me see here. Uh, can the change product be a case study? Yes, could be. I think the, the, the challenge is to find a, a change product that is relevant for all participants. And coming from different organizations, uh, it might be a bit of a challenge, but um, also uh, brings great value if you find this topic that you can... Um, uh, work on together uh, representing different organizations all right uh, we have a quite a specific question here but i think we have the time for it so um under type of organization in the application form how do i classify utility company partly private owned and partly government owned oh that's a good question, <laughs> good question. Yeah, <laughs> <our> question. <laughs> I, I think you should choose it. one of them uh, and then you can explain because there are quite a lot of information where you can put later on and then you can add that information when you describe the organization and where you're working. Yeah, you can it put will not be like a failure for that. We will oh. try to understand. Uh, is there a minimum target for team members that you're expecting per country? Yes, we will have a team from each country. So if we have just one application from one country, it will be really, really hard for us to consider that that uh, application, even though it could be a very strong um, application in itself. So we we are from previous programs, their uh, average is like five participants from one country. And then, of course, we want the all all five of them to have a very good quality. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I have already begun my application and would like to know more about the relationship between the number of characters and words. Uh, I have Sorry? tried using the online character and word converter, there are different answers. What standard should we use? Um, I'm not uh, sure I understand the question. Do you? I think there is a limitation of characters or words. I can't remember right now which one. Maybe Therese, do you know that? No, I uh, I should have filled in an application in the real way, I guess. But no, I, uh, Louise, do you know if it's anything written? Is it written a number, uh, a certain... Uh, uh, I don't think so. 
actually. Maybe the one that wrote, that wrote that question can unmute and just- um, Yeah, Janet. Uh, go again. All right, um, thank you so much for the opportunity to ask. So um, on each and every question, there is a maximum number of characters. It says um, up to 6,000 characters. And in some instances, it says up to 1,200. I'm not really, but I'm very clear about 6,000. Yeah. And um, what I'm trying to do is trying to be compliant. And in trying to be compliant, I've actually gone, used the online character to word converter, and I get different um, answers. So I just wanted to understand that. Ah, oh, OK. I'm not quite sure actually, but uh, do, uh, do you have a problem to fit the text into the uh, the template? Absolutely no, but I also <laughs> don't want to, <laughs> I also don't want to put too much information. I just want to make sure that I'm relevant, I'm, I'm straight to the point. And yeah. I, I yeah. believe that that's the reason why the request for a certain character was put. Yeah, it's a maximum. So I think yeah. as long as you can put it into the template, it will be fine. Because I think the template yeah. will will um, um, ask you. It, it will cut the text if it's too many characters. Thank you. I'm answered. Yeah, we are so looking for a practical answer. <laughs> We're looking to... forward to read your application, Janet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have more questions. Yes. Um, as, is being nominated same as getting recommendation letter from our organization? Uh, or my organization is supposed to send my name directly to you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I would say that because you, you get the, the recommendation, you get the, your supervisor, for example, to, to sign a recommendation and in, the, um, in the application. Isn't that so? You have to you have to uh, write that. So I, you don't have to have someone sending it like uh, outside the application. That that is not needed. A very bad answer I felt. About. No, I think it's fine. No, but you need the signature of of your supervisor that you no. will given the time and so on that um, to participate no. in the program. Yeah, and then I also know that some some um, uh, organizations they are putting together a list with nomination and sending directly to us to say this is our prioritized prioritized um, uh, people. Jillian Jillian feels that uh, she's well answered, so yeah, <laughs> it's good. Um, if a person had applied previously and was not successful, is he he she still eligible? Yes. Yes. As long as you have not participated in the previous program, yeah, you're welcome. I think that was all the questions in the chat for now, if I have not missed anything. If I have missed your question, please unmute and, and uh, ask us directly. Yeah, we can, we can if you can uh, turn off the presentation and we can have a look again at all the Wonderful we actually people got here. received a question just now. Yeah, All right. Just, just to clarify, uh, someone just got into the meeting uh, and wondering if the program meant for ladies only. And uh, no, that's no, not no, what no. we meant. <laughs> no. We really, we really would like to have a mixture from different organizations, men, female, uh, younger, a bit more experienced, to have a good, good mixture within the program. And that's a, our experience, that that leads to a lot of better knowledge sharing coming with different angles on and different perspectives. So it was just because there are few women in the energy sector, we really would like to highlight that women applications are welcome. So men are most welcome. Also, <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah. um, you have mentioned that you want strong applicants. I would like to know what makes an ideal candidate for you. That's that's a question. <laughs> Maybe you can re repeat that, uh, Teresa. I think yes. we touched upon it. Absolutely. Um, I'll have it here so I don't forget anything. <laughs> No, but we what what we're looking at is someone uh, in the who has the mandate to carry out change work and to be a change agent in their organization. 
And we want this person to have a central or relevant position and function uh, in, in the organization. Because in order for this change project that you will work with, it, in order for that to be successful, you need to have the right role in the organization or an upcoming role of being able to implement this. So that's why it's very important. And then when it when it comes to the person qualifications, it 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 is um, what we're looking for is from someone that is ambitious, being curious, curious, uh, are interested to both take in new information and also to share uh, your own experience, your own networks, your own ideas. Um, we want you to be proactive when it comes to driving change. I mean, it's very good if you have been driving change before. Um, if you can, if you can show of of uh, experience of that, we want you to uh, be able to um, handle the English language in a very safe way, not safe in a way that you feel comfortable with using English. And we also want you to have an academic degree and or relevant uh, work experience. Yeah, because it and is I, quite a high level on, on the program. So it's good to have a background of, of um, in the area so you understand and you can pick up from there. Maybe I can add on, of course, it's also uh, important that you are representing a strategic organization. So uh, really working in, in a, a, a company or a, an administration or a ministry or wherever that is a key uh, key organization for the development within your country and also having a rele relevant position in that organization doesn't need to say that you are the the manager but that you're having a position that you are or can be expected to be part of the development of that organization and also that you feel comfortable with sharing the, the all the, uh, the all the information and all the uh, knowledge you get from the program we want you, you want, we want you to take that back to your organization and share it with your colleagues your supervisors and so on because uh, knowledge is such a good thing the more you share the stronger it becomes you know <laughs> it won't water out in any way it's just um, yeah it's a good thing <laughs> it's a good question you're very good uh, we have had uh, a couple of questions regarding the recording and the slides, and we will upload it on our website later. Yeah, perfect. I've, I've sent the link to the website in the, the chat, so please have a look there. Yeah, thank you, Louise. Perfect. Um, please feel free to ask more questions. If you're if you don't want to write in the chat, you can ask us. We'd like to hear people talk as well. <laughs> um, I don't have my passport ready as a at now uh, i'm processing it now am i eligible yes you can send you can send a copy of your old passport and just mention that you have a new one coming up so don't hesitate to apply just because you have an old passport that happens to all of us all the time mm -hmm. we're we're humans not uh, completely <laughs> okay i only have a national id okay well send that then Yes, you can update we're us. Being, we're being kind, aren't we, Christina? We're not... <laughs> yeah, but I think the important thing is that you will have, uh, if selected, that you will have um, an um, accurate passport when it's time to travel. Uh, yes, so... but they have to speed up that process then. Yeah, it sometimes yeah. takes a very long time. Yes. Especially so I think we actually use the time set for this meeting so if we're running out of questions, um, oh, maybe there's one more. Yes, it says you mentioned applicants should be in a position to drive change. Yes. What do we mean by that? Um, let's see if, if, is this meant? No, it should. It it's sometimes you know. Uh, you, sometimes you have like a formal leaders, but you can also be uh, coming in as a younger or with other experience into an organization, taking that experience, sharing with with your colleagues, and uh, influencing your supervisors. So it's not to say that you have to have the formal 
position to drive change. It could, could also be that you are using your, your experience and that you can see the development needed for your organization and that you have the energy and the courage to actually be part on that, on that uh, change for your organization. So that but, is what we are, uh, are looking for. But also, uh, usually if you come in and maybe your title doesn't say that you are in this um, uh, right level, but your supervisor can can grant for that. He or she is really, she's really ambitious. Uh, he is very driven. Uh, I, as a supervisor, will really support he or she to, to carry out this, uh, this change project. That's fine. But you need the support. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, we also got a question about who who uh, takes care of the travel expenses. And Luis uh, wrote that CEDA finances travels, but not the national travels. So when it's within the country, uh, it's on you. Yeah. But going to Sweden and going to Zambia, uh, the travel and also the stay at the hotel and all meals will be covered by the program. Yeah. And also the, the stay and the the, uh, the food and so on when you have the semi digital meetings within your own country, but we can't pay for the the, uh, the national travels. That's the only thing that um, is not included. But usually we used to, we, we, most of the time we try to be in the capital city or close by, so it shouldn't be a very high amount. So probably your supervisor will be able to, or your organization will be able to, to uh, cover those costs. Um, we have a question regarding um, signatures here. Yeah. Um, for example, my boss who nominated me is on leave and can't get his signature. What happens and the deadline is here? Um, uh, is it possible for you to reach he, him or her uh, so that he could um, send a digital signature? That would be preferable at least. Yes, yeah. try to get the digital signature. I also saw a comment from Baraka from Rep1 recommending the program. I just want to say hello. <laughs> nice <Aww>. meeting you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's nice. Yes, uh, we have uh, passed our time. We usually, Swedish people are very keen on keeping time. Uh, in due respect to everybody that is uh, joining us here. So we have passed this time with five minutes and we hope that this, uh, that this um, information webinar have been useful for you. As Louise written before, if you have any remaining questions, please send them to uh, info at life.se. Uh, and we will, uh, of course, do our best to answer them afterwards. But very nice to see all of you here. We would love to have had the time to chit chat with each one of you, but hopefully we will get to meet many of you very soon, both online and in real life. But until then, thank you very much and enjoy your day and good luck with your applications. Thank you for taking your time to join us today. Yes, thank you. Hope to see you soon. Bye.